Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. Today we're working on a split system LG. This is a single circuit for a IT room. This has a known leak and we're going to be doing a pressure test to find out where we're leaking. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. We're working on a split system LG. This is a single circuit. This system has a known refrigerant leak, and today we're gonna to be trying to find out the mystery of where it is. This unit provides cooling all year round for a server room. There's a lot of computer equipment in there, and it is very much needed. In order for us to shut down this machine and find that leak, we actually just set up a portable air conditioner inside that room while we try to find and make this repair. All right, so before we begin the full process of removing the refrigerant and pressure testing everything, I actually just set up a portable air conditioner. We have it right here and it's exhausting through this duct up here. And typically these just drain into a pan, but we don't want to get water anywhere here, especially near all these electronics. So I set up, I put it on top of a little, a little dolly. So we raised up from the floor so we can set up a little hose. And I got it going into a condensate pump and it's coming out through here. This is where the other machine was discharging the water and that goes outside. So we got this all set up. It's pretty decent in here. And now we can begin shutting down the other machine fully. Now that we have everything set up downstairs in the basement, we can begin by recovering the remaining refrigerant in the system. We already have this open, that open, it's purged. You gotta do things the right way. All right, guys, we're below zero. We should be good. Let's stop this recovery. All right, we're all recovered. So now we have no refrigerant in the piping. So this is a split system. We have the outdoor unit, of course, outside, our condensing unit. And then we have our indoor unit aka our evaporator section our indoor blower of course indoors in that it room also we have two pipes connecting from the outdoor to the indoor I have a treat for you guys on how i'm going to do this because i've actually haven't been taught this anywhere this is actually my idea and personally i don't waste my time with machines like this anymore just filling it up with nitro and then searching for a leak because you sometimes you can search all day and won't even find a leak and sometimes you have multiple leaks so the idea here is going to be to cut these pipes and also once again let me just finish what i was saying um the reason we're gonna do what I'm doing now is because I don't know where exactly these pipes go some of this sometimes these pipes are behind the wall and there's no search you can do so what we're gonna do is actually cut these pipes right here crimp them put in a pigtail so we can actually check pressure so we're gonna isolate the outdoor unit on its own we're gonna isolate the indoor unit on its own and we're gonna isolate each line so now the machine is gonna be in one two three four different places and we're going to pressurize each so we're going to and then we're going to see where we lose pressure is it the condensing unit that's leaking is it this line that's leaking is it this line that's leaking or is it the indoor unit that's leaking so let's get go ahead and cut this up let's get this started Wow, no wonder this thing is lagging. Do you guys see what I'm seeing here? This is not brazed, this is soldered. You don't solder refrigerant lines. I have seen it done in the past with old systems that use low pressure refrigerant. This uses R410A. This is not a gas tight connection if you guys took your epa license you're gonna know a gas tight connection is brazed this was not brazed no wonder this is leaking 
poor installation. All right, you can also see this copper line over here. You see how we're turning green. I heard the units with the white insulation have really poor quality and they don't come with any warranties. So what I wanna do is cut the pipes and let's isolate the condensing unit from these pipes. All right guys, let's chop this up. Right, so we cut the pipes there and we got these right here. These are pigtails. So over here, we're gonna be able to connect gauges on the parts of the system where we cut. As far as this, since we're outdoors, I'm gonna crimp these, braze those shut, crimp these, braze those shut. We have ports here where we can connect the gauges. And as far as for the line set, we're gonna have everything inside so we could actually protect our gauges in case it rains or something like that. So let's get this part started. Did not know this was here. It's always hard to find a leak when you're not the one who installed it. You don't know where they made the connections. All right, so this is another heat absorption putty. This is wet rag heat blocking putty. And what I wanna do is actually cover this up while I braze this so we don't get tricked because solder has a much lower melting point than a brazing rod. So while you're heating this up, you don't wanna melt this and be like, oh wow, it was just this leaking the whole time because you could have created that leak just now. Also, don't brace any sort of refrigerant piping. That's just not the right thing to do. So let's, let's brace this up. That's just a quick look of what that looks like. Should be good. All right, light it. All right, All right. heat up that top. All right. And we're gonna let it brace. Keep it like right there. You're not on the pipe. There you go, right there. Not yet. You see, heating up the whole pipe. Right there, yeah, hold it right there. Okay. Check again. Alright, there. Go all the way around. All the way. Just the top of it. A little bit more in the back. Back corner. Okay. Yeah, right there. All right, let go. That's it. Next. And we're going to do the same thing. Yeah. So now this condensing unit is isolated. I got this little gauge on here. We're gonna pressurize and we're gonna leave this on overnight. So, close this for now. Cause if you open up that nitro tank with this open, you might break the needle on the gauge. So let's open this. Let's see and pressurize here. Let's make sure the pressure's coming up on this side. And it is good. All right, so I got it above 300. It's at about 315. Before you walk away and do this, you wanna check the connections that you just made. Cause you don't wanna get fooled into thinking you got a leak in the condensing unit and it was just your work. Let's check that fitting while we're here. That's definitely a suspect right there. I 
my original visit, I did check all these little flares. These can leak as well. Let's just do a quick second check. All right, so I disconnected the gauge of the nitro tank. I only have this and we are about 345 pounds. What I'm gonna do is just take a picture so we know exactly where we left off. And when we come back, we're gonna see if we lost any pressure. Let's make our way downstairs and isolate the rest. Also a quick pro tip, make sure your gauges and your connectors are not leaking because that will definitely fool you. All right guys, you can see there's an old wall bracket here. So there probably used to be the AC there. And then they ran the line set over there. And into this blower. Okay. So I wanna cut this as close to this unit as possible. It's extremely tight here. But I'm thinking I can cut it right here. And we'll isolate this. Look at this ugly job, man. Look how these pipes are turning green. If you notice, there's another soldered connection right here. Horrible. All right, cut out the insulation. Let's go ahead and cut both pipes. For the fact that I noticed those soldered connection, there's a good chance it's the line set. All right, guys, we got the pipes cut. So the idea is basically to install one of these, crimp it, braze it, and we can pressurize the system and also add a gauge. And let's see where we lose pressure. Let's get this set up. All right, so I put these on each. One thing I just noticed, unfortunately, the sprinkler is right there. So we're gonna take a cold rag full of water. I'm gonna have Christian hold it on there, keep it cool. I have to be careful over there. Well, I just quickly braze this. We actually just set up a little fan to keep that and I brought these pipes down. We're quite away from that now, so we should be okay to finish this up. Let's go ahead and get this over with. Also, of course, whenever you're brazing one of these in, make sure you take the Schrader valve out. You can melt a little gasket inside. The gasket's that little blue part right there. All right, we have that set up. We pressurized also just above 350. Double checked our connections. We're not leaking, so if we lose pressure, we know where it is. Now we're just gonna set up the same thing. Another set of gauges for the line sets. 
All right, guys. So we got this one just above 350. I'm gonna take a picture. As far as the low side gauge, we got it at, is it 320, 335? Because you can't really see past 350 here. Look at the gauge. And then this one, we set it above 350, got about 360. We're gonna take a picture for everything and basically give it some time and see where we lose pressure. So if we lose pressure here, it's this line set. If we lose pressure here, it's this line set. If we lose pressure anywhere here, the issue is in this area and upstairs where the condensing unit is outside. If we lose pressure there, we know it's in the condensing area. And personally, I think this is the most efficient way to find a leak. All right, guys, we have everything isolated in four different places now. Everything's pressurized. We checked our work. Our work is good. So if anything's leaking, we're going to pinpoint this leak. And this is definitely the most efficient way to go when it comes to these split systems, especially the thing is when the pipes are just going through walls and things like that, and then you can't trace out the pipes. That's when things really get hectic. And even though you might find one leak, the problem is there might be multiple leaks. And as we saw, we have soldered connections on a 410A refrigerant system. That's already a telltale sign that, you know, you're gonna have issues in the future. That's not the right thing to do. We got this guy blowing right here. Everything's looking good. Kind of safe pump, all that. I have a little clip over there, so we're safe. You don't want any water getting on here. And pretty much that's the way we do it. We're gonna end this one here and we'll be back another day and we're going to check those pressures and from there we're going to pinpoint this leak and make that repair if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come up with new videos every week i'll catch you all next time